Hello and welcome to the next episode of Advanced Blueprint Tutorials. Uh, in this episode we will continue working with our Paragon uh, character and we will set up attacks and abilities and we will try to as closely as possible uh, copy the abilities that the character have in Paragon game that was discontinued by Epic Games. Uh, so in this episode we will set up the new combat component. I will explain how to set it up, how to use it, and what certain events do, and why they are important, and in what, what order should they be uh, set up. With an example, we will set up the basic attacks, and we will also set up the abilities, and we will also uh, do some additional animation overlays uh, for the abilities um, use. Okay. So let's see where we are at right now. I've copied the third person uh, map, deleted all assets that are not uh, relevant to it, and uh, just added the game mode of Paragon. So now we have our Countess, she's turning in place, and she is running, strafe walking, okay, and she can jump. And yeah, that's pretty much it. She doesn't attack, she doesn't have abilities, she should have a right-click ability, Q, E and uh, I think F or R, I don't remember. The ultimate ability will make a dummy target that we could execute abilities at. And uh, yeah, let's jump in and let's set up uh, the base attacks first. Okay, so what we'll need uh, definitely for it is just... Uh, okay, we'll need to add the component which is called the combat uh, master component and from this component we'll compile, we'll get and we'll do setup debug, for now we'll leave it at true, setup default attacks and this is really important, promote variable default attacks and uh, we'll have only one attack on left click so let's uh, compile let's add one attack and let's prepare the attacks so let's go into uh, examples and uh, let's go into uh, paragon countess character heroes countess animations and here we have three attacks. Uh, actually, four attacks. Which? What is the MSA? Let's see. So, so this one looks like this. I don't see a difference really. Mm, let's see. This is sequence length one point zero three two hundred sixty. Keys. I don't see a difference, so let's just do this, and we have primary A tech A, B, and C. What is this? Okay. I've never seen how it's set up by default. Okay, so this is the third one. Okay, this is the second one. Okay, so we got three attacks. So let's take those three and we will need either examples. Um, let's do it like this. We'll go into blueprints. In blueprints, we'll do a new folder, which is Paragon Countess. And here we'll do uh, abilities. And inside the abilities, we'll do. Ah, we'll just copy here. So let's get back here. Um, oh my god. Okay, again. Uh, Paragon Countess character, heroes, Countess animations. And uh, we need. Primary, primary. Okay, all those three montages. And we will start with that. 
Mm. Oh, you know what? We'll actually take this level start montage as well. One, two, three, four, and I don't see any other relevant montages. They are like uh, animation montage. Yeah, there are only four. Okay, so let's take those, copy them here. Copy, we don't want to move because we don't want to do anything to the structure of the Paragon counters itself. So we're making those copies and now uh, Okay, let's change its name. Mm. Attack A. Attack B. Attack C. Okay. And let's edit them. Okay, so let's do it like this. So this will be slot name, default group, upper body. Okay. Slot name, default group, upper body. Okay. And this one will be because it has a twist, it will be full body. And none of them is root motion, so this is fine. Um, and we have this. Okay, this is full body and this is probably not root motion as well. And let's do some cool stuff. So... Um, We got abilities, so now we'll do like this. So on a controller, let's look at the controller. X is the attack. So we'll do an attack X. Okay. And we'll do another attack, uh, which is error X. And we'll do an error attack as well. And let's do for non air. It will be attack A. Compile, save. Okay. Now, set up. Uh, register collision mesh. And that will be tricky. We need to add two meshes. And set up. Um, okay, we have to do basically all of those authority. Uh, combat reset time and set up out collision press it. Okay, those are the important ones. Okay, um, this will have to be twice. And I will explain why in a second. Uh, okay, this one is also very important and to be set up just once. So we can add here. Okay, so let's focus on those. We're setting the debug because we want to have debug draw. And um, make array self. Uh, ignore classes, none. Okay. Um, okay, a combo reset, let's say two seconds. It's more than enough. No animation takes more than two seconds for her attacks. Uh, start, stop, melee collision, precision, let's make it small, but reasonable let's say 30 trace per second let's say it can't be zero let's say mm, 60 yes and visibility okay 
So what we've done here is we an empty array. Okay. So uh, we can do an ignore list of specific actors. So we can, for example, if we have a child actor that is a weapon, we want to ignore uh, the child and the parent. So we want to ignore either the character itself as the child actor itself. If we have attached actors like armors, helmets, uh, anything that is not part of this entire thing because uh, we are uh, by definition ignoring the owner and the owner is the owner of this component. So this entire blueprint. However, any attached actor or any child actor is not part of this blueprint and has to be specified additionally to not be traced and not be self-damaged. We can also make um, an array of classes. So for example, we could go and add, uh, uh, you know, a Paragon Countess example, or that would be a player pawn so that players cannot deal damage to other players and they would be ignored automatically, but that wouldn't contain all pounds, only the pounds of this specific class. So let's just add this. Um, default attacks, uh, you have inputs and attacks and you can specify any inputs. Those are just the inputs I've specified as default. So I got A, B, X, Y, which is the, you know, controller, uh, Xbox controller X, Y, A, B. Uh, R is the um, uh, same combo, however, executed when in air. If you want to have different attacks that are in air in comparison to attacks on the ground, and this is what we're doing here. So, fast attack on ground is this. Fast attack in air is oh yeah. Let's let's make it. Um, so let's go into Paragon Countess character, Heroes Countess animations, and attack air. Okay. And create any montage. Uh, okay. And let's put it where we put everything. So here. Let's set some color that I will distinguish and always find in the browser. Okay, so now we have this and we can specify uh, we can specify this attack here. Okay, so you have a ground attack and an air attack. Okay. Uh, and this setups, uh, like if you do any attack, it's a montage. Any montage can be overwritten by another montage, which means that if you, for example, start attacking, but then do a vault, do a stun, do anything that runs in the same slot. So by the way, that's why you should have multiple um, groups of montages and multiple slots per group. Uh, so you can run and overload, uh, you know, montages that are more relevant than others. So you could have an ability montage group, which has different slots and you could have, um, another group which is uh, buffs and for example buffs override uh, abilities or the other way around uh, but right here we just got the default group which is a single group so when you run a montage uh, it clears all slots so if you have multiple slots in multiple elements of the anim graph let's take a look here um, mm. Okay, anim graph. So we got uh, this slot full body, slot full body. You have multiple slots. You have the slot uh, upper body. Uh, if you play upper body, it will uh, overload this full body. It will overload this, this. Anything you do uh, will be cleared and it will just run this. And if you play another anim montage that is full body, it will clear this instantly and play this one. So uh, you need to be prepared that at some point you might break your attack or for example, your character dies and that could break the entire combo uh, chain. That's why you need to have a fail save that on start of every attack, there is a timer that resets the combo. So let's, uh, the default is three and a half seconds, but I want to make it smaller. That's why I made this event to only two seconds. And like you can see, any setup authority means that it will work only set on the server. The owner cannot send it, only the server can set it. Uh, but begin play, 
place on uh, client and place on the server so we have a guarantee that it will be on server as well and then this is the most important one you have a setup of collision start socket collision end socket and precision so uh, you take the socket a and socket b and you draw a line between them and then you split this line into little chunks this is the number of chunks so if you want to track for example a very small object like a dagger 10 would be enough if you want to track for example uh, arrows uh, for archery one is enough actually um, but if you want to track a long uh, weapon like a sword uh, 30 to 50 should be enough if you want to have really complex very accurate precision you can trink it up up to 100 and traces per second is um, overwriting the tick of the game so this is run by timer and timer can be actually faster than the tick rate of uh, of your frame rate and yeah uh, complex collision and collision channel if visibility we could have an extra channel which says melee combat for example and we could have different uh, reaction to this channel per object and that will be a lot easier to make those filters just by uh, you know implementing the channel in certain actors or not but this is an extra layer of filtering uh, additional actors that you want to react to melee damage but not your own melee damage obviously okay uh, so this sets up uh, the basics and right now we won't do any collisions we will just swing attacks if we try to do something so let's actually do that so let's do a left mouse button click and we'll go into combat master and we'll do uh, try uh, set up try buffer input which says hey I am buffering an input of some sort and because we set up attacks for X we will buffering X uh, however we also want to read in uh, is falling from movement component and if we are on the ground we want to do this and if we are not We want to do error X. So basically, left mouse button for us as a key or any input that we specified is X as a tag combat attacks X. You can add as many tags as you want, you can name them however you want. I'm named them so I can distinguish them easily. So this is X button on a controller, and this is X button on a controller when you are in error. So I am checking if I am in error. If I am in error, I'm running disability. If I'm not, I'm running disability and that's it. There's nothing more to it. Okay. And let's see if it works. Uh, notice I haven't added any notifications to those uh, here, nothing. So let's see if it works. And she's attacking. And after two seconds, when the reset timer hits, I can attack again. However, um, the blend of uh, those animations for um, for Paragon characters, when they are standing, they should be blending not just by the spine, but actually run the entire animation. So let's do something about that. That's going to be a very easy fix. Uh, let's go into any animation, really anim slot manager we have the default group and we have a full body on ground uh, upper body in motion okay i like this one upper body in motion can be you can add your own um, groups and slots so basically you can have multiple groups and you can have multiple montages as long playing at the same time as long as they are in different groups inside a group any slot overrides any other slot but 
any group doesn't override other group. It just overrides this group. So you can have default group and you could have additional group, which would be, I don't know, um, status effects. And now if I have status effect slot stun, I could make uh, stun be an additive montage or a montage that would play at the same time as my attacks, for example, and I would be, you know, doing something like that. Um, so yeah, and you can run multiple montages easily with that. Uh, but let's use um, upper body in motion slot. Why not? Upper body in motion. So here, in our walking pose, we need to do layer per, per bone. No, we'll do something different. Uh, we are blending here. So this is blending the upper body. This is blending the full body. Um, <laughs> We'll have to do it somewhere around here by the layer blend. So when we are idle, uh, blend by boolean, if we are um, or you know what, why not? Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, this will go here, this will go here. So if we are not idle, then we are doing this. However, if we are idle, we are just playing this without the layer blend. And right now we can do the upper body because why not? And this is not, this will not be part of the update to the entire system this is an implementation um, okay <laughs> again this is an implementation specific for this paragon example i would not do it like this otherwise but i can do it like this here so now when i play yes you see i am playing the entire animation if i am idle but if i am moving i am playing just the upper body but idle, you play the entire thing. Okay. Uh, that was very easy fix, save. Okay. Uh, so, okay, now we know that we are playing the animation. We know that we're playing the attack, but we're playing only one attack all the time. And by the way, let's check the in-air attack if it's playing as well. One, two. Oh, wait. Ah, it's not playing. It's not playing because we don't have probably an override group in our anim graph. Let's go into the anim graph and see. So in air, slot full body. Okay, so this is the full body. So probably this attack is not full body. Let's see. Uh, attack RA. Yeah, it's default slot. I haven't set up the slot yet. Now it should be fine. Mm. Okay, and jump. And yeah, we are attacking in air as well. And we're doing a different attack in air because we got a different state. Um, However, like you've seen, uh, when you are playing a montage in air, when you land, you're still playing this montage, but that's a, another set of boots. I'm not going into it too much. I want to see, I want to show you how the combos work. So all we've done to set up this attack is make a montage and specify it here and push this value here. And this is the default attacks table and that's it. We haven't done anything else. Uh, so now let's go into attack A and let's branch it into attack B. So I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. We don't need that. What we do need 
is add notification combat next combo okay so we will specify that for X the next combo is attack B and then we will do a notification combat reset combo because we don't want to wait those full two seconds if we can we will actually reset the combo after the animation immediately or we might even do it sooner we might actually do it somewhere around here and allow input here or you know what no uh, this is at the end and now we'll do an input buffer notification state buffer input so when you attack you allow at certain point click of another attack and when this click concludes depends on you so let's say 0 75 second okay here and that's it so we are setting that hey uh, if I click X whatever the button hits for X but this tag now do this attack okay uh, unless we hit reset and it will go into default first attack however if we click x before th this hits in here it will actually execute another attack if we click it before we start this notification state um, then nothing will happen so i'll show how it, this works yes okay click two seconds reset click actually after one animation it resets to the attack a and we can see the debug information uh, that we are setting combo to attack b if i hit x two times really fast i am actually executing one attack and then buffering a second attack and doing second attack of course, I can do a hold of mouse button, which we'll do in a second. Okay. So let's go here and adjust it. Let's let it go sooner and later. And yeah, do it like this. Now let's go into attack B and branch it into attack C. So we'll do the same thing. We'll that uh, that another track. Save it. Okay. So add notification. Set next combo. Next combo is on tag X, and it's a taxi. And then at almost the start, we allow to buffer input and execute this buffer input by the end. And then add notification reset combo at the very end okay and now let's immediately go into attack c and set up the last attack in the combo attack c add notification and we're just doing the reset combo uh, at the end but you know what we could do a full loop so we can do a set next weapon and this weapon will be uh, i mean next attack it will be x and it will be attack a back into attack a and on the track we'll do ah okay another track and on this track we'll do combat buffer input almost at the start almost at the end safe okay and let's see if it works one two three one two three okay one two and full body one two three one two three okay I understand why they are using the curve for the full body and we could use the curve uh, but let's let's not bother ourselves with that for now um, we could also do yeah okay Let, let's leave it like this let's not uh, overcomplicate things I just want to show how this entire thing works 
So yeah, with those simple steps, uh, we've just set up yeah, this. Uh, we've just finished setting up the combo and it doesn't re didn't require much right so if we want to have the mouse button hold we have to do it a bit differently uh, custom event mm, x button clicked okay and let's do a variable which is called uh, allow attack hold and we'll do uh, we'll do two things here so if we don't allow a uh, hold button on click we're doing X button clicked and that's it okay um if we allow hold button it is more complicated we need to now do things on pressed and released we'll do a set timer by event and this is the event handle you could also do set timer uh, i will show it set timer by function name and like i said any event is a function you can copy its name you can put it here and if this has any input values, they would show up here because it's copying the signature of a function. But uh, yeah, we will not do it like this. We have the event here, so we can do it by handle. And let's say 0, 015 looping and X button clicked would have to fire up immediately once. And invalidate and clear the timer by handle if you release so this will go here hold functionality okay okay so this is the I don't know what format the entire thing okay <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. okay and for the attack in air all we have to do here because we have only one attack is add notification reset combo so it opens the attack option sooner And that's it okay but I cannot hold the tax if I click it will just buffer one click and I think the buffers I made it uh, I have to shorten them down and they will look better because they are uh, buffering too long like half a second that's that's absurd let's do it like this uh, it's still catching my buffer okay uh, okay and this is in air and this one is Okay. Okay, that makes more sense now, and it's easy to read. So, allow attack hold. True. And now, when I hit play and I hit left mouse button and hold it, I am just making a non-stop combo. Okay. Um, 
and yeah, obviously, uh, melee attacks on the ground can branch into, can, uh, you know, change attacks in air. So, for example, uh, ATEC B could branch into ATEC, attack C on combat attack X, but I could do uh, at the same time uh, set next combo. I could set. Um, error X into error attack A. So like light attacks can branch into heavy attacks and so on and so on. Uh, so you could do, you know, different combination of different contexts because uh, the difference between error X and the X for me is just context. Oh, I think the engine crashed. No, okay. Um, yeah. Let's hold it. Okay. Okay. Uh, what next? So we have the left mouse button and it's working. However, it's not tracing uh, melee attacks, right? So we need to do something about that. Uh, we need to add a mesh of any mesh. Uh, let's say a static mesh. Uh, let's make it weapon one. And let's make it a cube. Mm. Or, hmm. Okay, let's see how the skeleton is being set up. Uh, let's go into skeleton. Okay, weapon base. Let's see how it's being tracked. So, uh, weapon base left. Uh, okay, this is FX. And... the right okay those are the trails for actual hands okay uh, so aiming a hit of ability has nothing to do with uh, actually hitting with weapons in Paragon as a game it is just doing probably um, you know sphere collision check and checking if the dot product of an enemy is at certain value so we know that he's in front and in range of an attack but it doesn't really check the colliders um, so we'll have to do something about that and let's do it like this fx weapon tip r okay copy mm. Start. Ah, oh, doesn't work like this. Okay. Um, well, copy selected socket. That should work. No, it's actually copying the socket. Okay. Now I have it. This is the start. And this is exactly the opposite, but. <laughs> I will fix it in a moment. So this is the base. Okay. So right now um, we set the names of those and we need to set up colliders. So let's set up um, Authority collision. Okay. Register collision mesh. So we need to register a mesh, which is a scene uh, component. Uh, so uh, an actor component, which can be, um, which can be cast to scene component. So for example, that would take this component, but it will break. It requires a component that has a scene, so it can have sockets. Uh, because any scene component can have sockets, so let's say that it's our mesh. So let's register this by sort R. 
Okay. So uh, register sort R and it will activate this mesh um okay it will activate this mesh when we run it uh, as an event so we want to have it active basically all the time or no, oh no not really uh, we want to have it active per ability so let's go back into abilities attack a and let's add here another notification activate weapon okay so activate weapon name uh, what did we call it let's look at it okay, I don't need you uh, we called it sword R okay so this name we just push it here and we are asking should we clear other weapons is this the only weapon we are tracking yes okay save save uh, compile save everything okay start okay nothing breaks but nothing is being traced it's because we need one more notification a notification trace and let's pause and let's see okay so from here a notification straight trace hit you go here and that's it okay let's check and we are actually tracing like we should and let's see slow mo 0 0.2 okay that seems to be working fine but we'll know once we add those to other ones so here we have to do add notification activate weapon and we'll have sort ah, a left which we don't have right now but we'll add it in a second and we need a notification state which is trace hit and we will trace hit here you know what let's add a track and finish here okay mm. and yes this is the only active weapon so deactivate sword R and on the last attack attack C I will leave the air attack because it's it's unrelevant for this example uh, we'll do it like this we'll need even more tracks so we'll do it like this add notification activate weapon add notification activate weapon and we are activating two weapons here which is sword R and sword left and we are not clearing other weapons when we activate that so it is doing an add unique which means that if we already have active sword l l which is true because we just said it in the previous attack uh, it will not trace this weapon twice so you don't have to worry about that and now we are doing uh okay trace hit slash and finish somewhere around here let's actually start even sooner maybe here okay and let's see how it looks like mm, slow mo point one okay uh, this is strange okay yeah no it's it's tracing properly Hmm. I don't like the setup of those sockets. There's something very wrong with those. 
it's not tracing as it should and let's see what's the errors access now I'm trying to find mm, okay save colliders find okay Oh, okay, yeah, the, the order is because we do not have a saved collider sort L. Um, so we kind of, yeah, it, it's no wonder we're we're having an error. Right now we won't have error, but we'll be tracing. Um, but we'll be still tracing only right weapon because we don't, we can set up only one socket and we are always tracing the right weapon so that's a bummer uh, okay oh sort L that's how we called it now we shouldn't have any errors one two and three and no errors exactly so what we can do about it uh, we can add a mesh mm which is just a I don't know, static mesh mm. and we can add uh, another static mesh and call it tracker L and this one will be connected to the FX weapon base R and this one will be connected to a fixed weapon base L. Okay, and uh, let's set up this static mesh as one of the cubes. We got so many cubes here. Uh, cube, I mean, environment side scroller in geometry meshes. Now, well, let's use this one you know what we will actually copy it here and we will change its name to collider mesh Okay, and uh, let's see, we need a socket, which will be the start, I mean, how do we, uh, okay, start and stop, just like that, and it will be on the axis of at exactly bottom, so minus 50. At, at the center axis and it will say just that and another one that will go stop and it will go at 50 okay and that's it we don't need anything else for this collider mesh and let's go now into viewport and collider mesh okay yeah it's giant obviously uh, let's untap that, let's make it point 0.1, point 0.1, and this is 1. Uh, let's now rotate it by, no, uh, yeah, no, wait. Mm. So it's here and here. So, okay, minus 90, okay, and now we have to move it by Z, 50, no, <laughs> uh, it will be by X, okay, let's, let's make it only 45. So now we have this collider here and let's do the same magic on this one 
and make it 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 1, uh, minus 90, and how did we move it? By 45. Okay, it works. So we got now those blobs on our swords. Okay, but we'll make them disappear in a second. Let's go into event graph, start and stop, everything is fine. And now we're not pushing this mesh, this is the right mesh and this is the left mesh component. Okay, and that should work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, slow mo point one, full screen, and hit. And it's tra tracing perfectly the entire uh, length of this blade. And hit. And third one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Point 0.2 or even, you know what, point 0.5. So half speed is more than enough to see that it's tracing as we want it. However, if we want to increase the accuracy of the trace, we can do it here. So we can do, for example, 100 traces per second. And if we play now and do a slow-mo Wait, uh, slow mo point five. Yeah. Now you can see that the shape of the trace is a lot more smooth, as it's a lot faster. So it's uh, you know more uh, how to say it. I don't know the word, <laughs> but yeah, it's doing hits. And uh, let's make it even more than 30, let's make it 50. For a one meter mesh, that should be more than enough. And now it's almost a full shape. It would be very hard not to hit something with it. And we are already seeing that it is hitting static meshes all around. So boom, boom, boom. Okay, great. So let's now make them disappear. So visible. Uh, hidden in game. Okay. Let's see if they will still trace. Yeah. So even if they are invisible, they are not being rendered. That's so they don't add to the geometry of the scene that you are seeing, but they are still there per se. So we can use them as a collider. Okay. So they are still there. And in the, yeah, here you still have their preview. Uh, that's why I hidden them in game, not make them invisible. And let's say that they are no and they have no collision we don't need collision for them and we don't need any reaction from anything okay because they are not colliders the the traces they are making are the are the colliders so the combat master component is taking care of the collisions so uh, let's make it even a hundred by hundred that shouldn't impact the frame rate Stat FPS, stat unit, full screen, 120, 120, doesn't matter, slow mo, 0.2, okay. Okay, perfect. So we now got uh, basics of how to register um, colliders, how to do the initial setup of the component, how to do buffer of an input. So <laughs> before I've done falling and this, um, you know, um, click hold functionality, it was a lot simpler. 
so it was basically just just this event setup try uh, buffer input and it's saying try because it's it can have only one buffer and it it will set buffer only if buffer is empty and um, yeah, that's it for the melee attacks. So let's set up something a bit more complicated. Let's set up the right-click ability for um, for this character. So the right-click. Let's go into Paragon Countess, Characters, Heroes, Countess, Animations. Jeez, that's a lot. Uh, ability... Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Uh, right mouse button. There it is. Okay, and that's it. A big right mouse button in motion. Okay, I don't really see any difference, honestly. Um. Hmm. Okay, let's just do ability right mouse button. Or maybe by the end of it. No, uh, they look the same. Okay, let's make a montage. Uh. make it ability right mouse button uh, okay let's make it just default first we need to copy it to our examples move here right mouse button okay this is fine and let's edit it Okay, so uh, now in our default table, default attacks, we'll add another attack, which is the right mouse button. And right mouse button is on a controller Y, I guess. Um, and it will be ability right mouse button montage. Okay, however, this one should have a cooldown. So let's do a right mouse button uh, do once custom event and we'll call it uh, rmb uh, cooldown finished it will open the right mouse button again and when we click the right mouse button, we'll take the uh, Combat Master and we'll go and do try buffer input Y. And we're doing the same in error, not in error. Let's, let's not overcomplicate things like here. This is just an example that you can have different context and different functionalities for, per single button. So one button click can be hold, non-hold, it can do a lot of things. Oh, and by the way, when it comes down to timers, if you set the same timer from the same function name multiple times, it will override the timer. It will not start a new timer, it will invalidate the previous one and make a new one. And uh, you can use this handle as long as this one is, um, it, it exists. But if it doesn't loop, it will invalidate and clear by the end of it. And this is what we're doing here. So set timer by event. And this event is this thing. And it's not looping, and it's taking eight seconds. So once every eight seconds, you can do the right mouse button and not sooner. And you can also make it a variable and RMB cooldown time. Okay, and compile, and this is 8 by default. So, oh, 
okay and this right mouse button is is doing a few things so first of all it is activating a weapon second of all it's activating a weapon so it's activating the sword left and it active and it activates sword right and then it goes forward and it starts trace almost immediately so let's add notification uh, state trace hit and then spin spin somewhere around here you stop mm, you know what this is actually still a slash so let's stop here and you have to play almost the entire ability and here you have the reset reset combo and until you do that you might allow some input here uh, buffer input now let's make it a lot Here. like when she is getting up you buffer input and when she finishes getting up you can execute an uh, attack and you can have multiple of those and you could allow this so the buffer input works like this you allow to, for any input to buffer at this time frame but it executes by the end so if you make it like this you can hit mouse button here and nothing will happen and here it will execute attack and it will look a bit awkward um, so you can have multiple short buffers that are even overlapping and that will allow to execute attack like press here execute here or press here execute here or press here execute here and they shouldn't overlap too much okay something like that save and yeah we're tracing hit we are activating weapon they are not clearing other weapons that's fine uh, attack b is activating yeah okay attack a is yeah okay so that should work let's see play and f11 one two three we are attacking and we are doing right sword left sword right left both okay and right mouse button and nothing happened why nothing happened let's see ah obviously nothing happened uh because we are setting the uh, timer and everything but oh no 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 we are actually trying to buffer the y attack hmm why this didn't trigger attacks why okay <laughs> obviously why <sighs> it is playing montage in a group that we're not using so <laughs> full body okay <laughs> So it was fine i just yeah it is fine so and i can click nothing will happen because it's still doing cooldown and you know what when you you click we'll do this we'll take this handle see if it's valid mm. and we'll print string and we'll actually print how much cooldown we got left so append this okay add this mess and 
this entire thing format. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And we'll do this. Okay, this debug print is no longer needed. Uh, this is not needed really. Oh no, it is needed. Uh, okay. Uh, timer. Mm. Right mouse button. Okay, we got everything in comments like we should. This goes here and obviously here. And format. And now this looks a lot better and it's easy to read. Save and play and right mouse button. And again, eight, eight, eight. Oh, okay, I'm reading, I'm reading the value. <laughs> I shouldn't be reading the value of the cooldown. I should be reading of this handle, uh, get time remaining time. Okay, yeah, this. Okay format again and compile and save and play and boom and seven and six and five and four and three and two and one and and minus one it's invalidated so what's happening minus one means that it is not valid but the handle still exists um, <laughs> okay, I guess we have to do it differently. We have to do it like this, and from here, this, because the handle always is valid. Okay. Okay, that's strange. This, this, and that will go here and this entire thing goes here Okay. And I can't, I can't. Okay. So now it works. And we have the basic attacks and we have the special attack which also works. So let's now make an exemplary of uh, QRE attacks. I don't even remember how her attacks worked, so let me pause for a second and check, check YouTube how this character worked. <laughs> okay, got it. Uh, keyboard Q. So now we're doing an ability uh, and we're doing the same uh, do once, well, we're doing the same setup as we did here. and we're doing the same thing so do once we already got to do once okay custom event and we'll do q um, reset cooldown whoa without the space okay so this resets and we will also do um, this except it will go 
uh, I don't know, A. And uh, execute attack. But actually, it's a uh, try execute attack. No, we'll do it differently. We will do it differently because this ability has two phases. One is the targeting. So what we will need is the Q pose and character heroes counters animations ability Q. Oh no, it's ability E. Okay, never mind. Uh, whatever it is, it's disability. So, uh, okay, interesting. Because I think this is the teleportation, not the wave. I don't remember how it looked like. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so we need to do an overlay now. So let's go into our examples. Uh, examples of blueprints and in BP and we have to do a new count as an in BP uh, will be a animation blueprint I'm blind okay it's here it's counters obviously okay and it will go like this overlay not base uh, e ability okay and we got input pose uh, save cache pose saved cache input pose okay uh, and now we are using saved cache input pose and we are doing a blend bone. Uh, yeah. And the blend pose is being uh, is actually being a new state machine. So, nagrywam. To wytnę. E, świeżego. Za ile? Świeżego. Za, za ile? Za godzinę, tak? Dobra. Ok, new state machine. And this state machine will be just state machine. I don't have much of a thought today. Uh, state. The state is idle. And it will be epos ability e. I don't know how those abilities look like. Ability e. Oh no, this is the, this is not it. So ability Q, probably. Yeah, ability Q. Uh, jump forward, ability Q. Okay. Ability Q forward.
get it. Okay, let's say that it's this one. state moving which is obviously uh, idle not then you are moving and you're going back if you are idle and this will be exposed and moving is Ah, uh, this will be jump forward. Let's say this one. Default is idle. Okay. It's not much to it. Now let's do something with this uh, clamp. Mm, minimum point one, max one. Velocity. Okay. And that's everything. I think that's everything. And let's change its name to Q, not E. And um, abilities mm. it's not here. Oh, my God, okay, IMBP counters. Overlay Q underscore ability. Okay. Uh, and now we need to be able to read this uh, value that will set. So we can take, for example, our animation master component set up overlay and overlay pose will be animation overlay and we need a new one here but we don't have to do it like this we can go into our examples we can make data folder and we can add a new data table, or you know what? Uh, let's keep it in the same folder as all our Paragon stuff. And let's just make it here. And here we'll make a new... Um, let's miss Kelly use data table. Okay, gameplay tag. Table row, uh, Paragon, uh, Gameplay Tags. Mm. And we'll add a new tag, which will be Animation, Overlay, Countess Q. Okay, save. Go into our project settings. Go into gameplay tags and add this table. Paragon gameplay tags. It's already added. And it follows the same naming convention, which means that already we can compile and we can do it like this animation overlay Countess Q. Okay, 
and now here on our anim graph we need to link our overlay queue so we go into overlay and we have nothing uh, at state count as queue linked anim graph uh, overlay queue ability thank you and this is saved base pose and we need to expose everything and we'll put idle and velocity yeah, that's it not doing anything else and we need here overlay is equal um, paragon overlay count as q yes and it's not equal if it's not this one okay and that's it and we have overlay and let's see if it works if it works we should change our pose when hitting Q Q and nothing happened that's interesting um, hmm. okay let's let's debug that so we are hitting Q but nothing happens but we are uh, still running so it like this and let's go into anim graph and let's do it like this like this okay hmm so it is going through our ability so this actually works and this is actually running so what's happening Oh, okay. We didn't specify the blend. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is running. We can stop it. We haven't specified the blend. It is a mesh space rotation, and we are blending spine zero one and the blend depth, let's say two. Okay. Yeah. So this is how it should look, and we are also blending um, hand. IK root. Uh, uh, no, it's different. How is it called? IK hand root. Okay. IK hand root. Compile. Okay, yeah. That's a lot better. And play. And save. And Q. And now we are looking ridiculous uh, let's make it a softer blend let's say of four yeah softer blend looks a lot, a lot better um, so now we have prepared ability and we should have you know uh, this particle that's showing us target and now that we click left click we should release the attack and on right click we should just cancel but we're not doing that right now right we're doing what we are we were doing already so let's do something about that mm. okay so there should be a Q cooldown, obviously. Q cooldown is a float. Normally, I would use an ability uh, for that, but we are setting all the abilities inside this blueprint. So, once, uh, okay, and then custom event finish Q cooldown. Okay, this resets and if it is open then do Q uh, 
but this is the start of the ability not the execution of the ability so we need another one which goes like this uh, custom event uh, start cooldown queue and this won't be do once this will be a gate mm. so start cooldown will close the gate and finish cooldown will open the gate simple as that and it starts open because this is the default setting and mm, now we'll do a custom event start queue cooldown uh, Okay, we'll do it different. Uh, gate. This will be called close queue gate. Okay, and start queue cooldown will do a set timer by event. And this event is open uh, gate. And after we set, we're doing a close queue gate. And time is, I don't know, 8 seconds again, because why not? Uh, oh yeah, we need to specify it here. Okay, so once we hit Q, um, we just switch poses, okay? And we switch poses overlay to this Q being prepared. So now, on left mouse button, right mouse button, we need to complicate things a bit more. So on left mouse button, uh, we need to take animation master component and we need to read overlay. So we need to just get overlay tag. And if overlay tag is equals uh, count as Q, uh, branch and we could do this a uh, function collapse the function is q ability targeting let's say and this is obviously a pure function okay mm, so when pressed if it's not then do whatever you were doing doing before okay mm, this will be standard attack but now we have to also do this Q attack so this will be Q attack and If it is Q targeting, so it has this overlay, then we will have to do Combat Master. Mm. Try buffer input. And let's do this input uh, Y. Let's, uh, oh, okay, Combat attacks y this is the one we specified i guess let's see uh, no uh, it has to be something different so let's say a and start q cooldown so we need to close the gate immediately after buffering this attack uh, however, we should check if this buffer actually succeeded. So, yeah, uh, let's test it first. Let's not let's not overthink it too fast. Q ability execute, 
and on right mouse button uh, we're doing the same uh, ability targeting if it's true then set uh, set up overlay uh, none and if it's false then do whatever you were doing before okay let's see and this will be cancel queue Okay, but now we also need this uh, queue execution uh, ability. So let's go again, hopefully for the last time, to Pergon Countess character, global, uh, well, no, heroes, countess, animations, and ability, TQ. Is the execution? Yes, this is the execution. Okay. Let's make montage. Let's copy it where we need. Move, yes. And oh yeah, uh, this has to play in full body, or maybe in upper body. Nah, in upper body. And we're not doing uh, really anything here. We just might uh, do a one notification, which is reset combo because this is not tracing attacks really I mean it could but it should spawn an impact wave so we're just setting up the ability, uh, the ability you know animation and the ability execution should be spawned in a different way but you could do it by uh, custom event and now Q ability particle, for example, and I will show it how this works. So uh, let's go back here and let's go into the default tags and let's go into new, which was uh, which one we are using attack A so let's do attacks A and it will be ability Q montage and that's it so now we have uh, multiple contexts for left mouse button we will do Q attack which is the combat attack A um, or we could oh, we could you know what actually go into our if we are already doing examples, uh, we can go to Blueprints, Paragon, Data, and we can add another row, and we can do is Combat Attack Q. Okay, and now we can actually go into our main thing, and here in default attacks we can do. Uh, Oh, okay, it's attacks, not attack. Prular. Okay, and let's go here and let's go here and let's do Q. So we don't mix it up with something else, and we clearly know that this is X and Y. Like this could be, you know, RMB, just attack, whatever you want. You can call it whatever you want. 
and this one will be Q and here we will execute Q so single mouse button execute Q execute uh, RA or RX or execute X depending on the context of our situation and the context can be a post, the context can be a tag, the context can be a, you know, just value that you have a ability ready. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, so for example, we want Q to be able to execute only if we are uh, not playing any montage. So let's go here, playing, mm, no. Uh, anim instance get anim instance playing is any montage playing uh, uh, let's again collapse it to function place any montage pure function and yeah our return node would be extremely helpful Okay, so if it's not playing any montage, we can try Q, because if we are in middle of an attack, we cannot prepare an attack. It's simple as that. Save and yeah, play. So left mouse button works as did. This holds on cooldown. Now Q. Okay, we have an attack ready, and uh, left mouse button should cancel now. And it did cancel, Q, cancel, Q, cancel, and spin, Q, uh, Q, cancel, attack Q, no, it cannot go in because it has already animation montage playing, Q, okay, preparing an attack, playing overlay animations properly as, as she should, and left mouse button, boom, release, and after release, uh, left mouse button, try buffer input, uh, start the cooldown, so at start the cooldown, uh, no, here on release we also need to take animation master component and uh, overlay and set overlay none okay let's see now because not only when we cancel when we execute the attack we also have to finish the attack and now if I try to hit Q, I can't because it's on cooldown. But we are not reading the cooldown on hitting Q, so I will do that right now and we'll do a print string. Uh, okay. And get time remaining and form uh, append text. I mean a pen string Q cooldown is this mm -hmm. Close gate, open gate. Yeah, we can put them closer, but that's in general quite good. Start cooldown at timer. Um, allow when not playing ability.
Okay. And now we are also calling this. Uh, no, 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 we're not. Uh, so we have. Uh, oh, we don't have actually. So let's see. No, let's add the interface. And it's HR. Uh, no, it's example. PPI example interface. Yeah. So let's implement example interface. And in this interface, we have a. Uh, a custom event let's implement this so that created this and we've made a custom event on one of our animations so let's go into this animation which is the Q montage which is the execute and we called it ability particle okay and oh no I didn't copy the name okay now let's do a switch on name uh, which doesn't have a default we don't need default uh, or you know what we want to have a default print string oops you uh, not to implement this name yet Paragon Countess character error. Okay, so this is the default. However, if we do this, we will do a spawn emitter at location, not attached, and it will take our actor locate transform get actor transform. Uh, split structure and it's taking our location rotation and scale is one auto destroy when finished yes and do we have a uh, oh how they are set up let's let's hope they are not in chain character no 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 no, no. countess 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 where is she yeah effects particles oh cool there are melee, melee traces uh, abilities okay this is a hit uh, a tray I think it's this one. Okay, let's see. Camera effect. <sighs> what the hell? I'm terrible with particles. Uh, Oh my god. Okay, let's go with this one. I, I don't know anything about particles, so just play a particle, just an example, and that's it. Auto destroy, auto activate. Um, 
just to showcase that you can add a montage at any point, add another notification custom event. You can name this custom event some uh, print test and you can you know put it anywhere on the animation and then you can just implement here by adding another one which just goes print test and it will go just print string and the string would be even name for example uh, okay Okay, actually this entire thing should go into this one, okay, compile save and let's see, now I hit X and then I hit left mouse button and it, it actually does something, I have no idea what, and it's on cooldown, I can't do anything, I can cast this ability and I can do X again and execute and it does something and I could do same on the uh, because one of those okay this is cool let's actually play this one uh, as well so let's make another one which will be called a left mouse button ability particle And it's this one and location I think it's the same unless it has to be the root I uh, will know in a second uh, RMB ability particle and this just add here and now we need to obviously add this event so uh, left mouse button Particle. Oh my god. <laughs> never, never mind. Uh, okay, let's copy it and let's go into our left mouse button ability, which is here. And this is this montage, and let's just do. Yeah, somewhere around here, so we'll need another track. Uh, custom event. And we also have a custom double event, which is a state called uh, custom event notified state. And you also have a start and end. So it, it triggers one and two, and you have different names at begin and end. So this triggers this and this triggers this so we can set up a chain of events uh, at once and here yeah we already set it up so let's go back here and it didn't trigger why mm. ah okay that's why Okay, now it triggered, and we go here, instead of doing this, we'll just do the notifications uh, time particle effect trail. Okay, so this is a, a default notification state, it's taking a template, first socket name, um, it's fx, tray right one, Second bow is trail right to mm, from 
from center I don't know three and okay I think that's it let's see yeah now the trail actually plays slow-mo zero one let's see if those are the right sockets no I don't think so it's trailing just the handle let's wait for the combo to reset and again yeah it's trailing just the handle so let's change those uh, FX mm. FX weapon base R weapon tip R oh yeah that looks a lot better already yeah this is what we are looking for so let's just do it like this let's just hard code those affix it's not a problem count is melee it's called attack B and that will be actually very easy because it's doing a uh, trail at the same time that we're doing the tracing of hits counters melee trail and this will be left hmm. fx weapon base uh, weapon tip L from center 3 save and let's go into attack C and now we'll go into mm -hmm, trail Weapon base R, weapon tip. Come on, weapon tip R, three, save, and another track, and do another trail. And let's do count this melee tray, weapon. Uh, left base weapon left tip three okay save play right left both right left both and they are tracking hits okay Q release and we're back into moving right click we're doing an attack okay that works Q release uh, Q cancel Q execute Q on cooldown okay everything works so following those steps you can set up all the abilities that the Countess had in Paragon and that will take a few more hours but it wouldn't take more than one day to actually set up this entire character as we would want uh, you know gameplay wise and I guess that's it let's take a look if I missed something Let's see how badly broken is the multiplayer Because I don't expect it to work However, I'm using mostly components so it might work
and I'm testing on dedicated server and we shall see in a second so this window shift F1 come on oh it was control F1 why can't ah ok let's do it like this yeah uh, yeah through this window it will be easier so the attacks actually replicate properly ok the abilities replicated properly Q prepare ok it replicates properly cancel replicates cancel executes ok that's actually huh ok I guess it is multiplayer ready after all yeah everything seems to be working just fine <laughs> that's a nice surprise so when using components that are well prepared for multiplayer you don't have to bother with multiplayer really because the components are taking care of the rest like the entire combat component I made sure that any montages that are being played and specified in the default attacks and attacks tables are uh, you know just uh, multiplayer ready and uh, all those events you have in here in the setup that say um, setup authority uh, they can be overwritten by uh, non-authority so only game mode or the server can set up those values um, so for example a server can uh, change the colliders it can change for example the precision of collision based on the performance so if the frame rates f frame rate drops below certain value he can make uh, melee traces you know less complicated or he can for example measure how many players are on the server and the more players the less uh, traces per second uh, we're doing so yeah that's it this is the setup of the paragon character using the combat component and animation master component and it is multiplayer ready and working as intended uh, i am i know i'm terrible with particles and there are a few things we could set up a bit better especially when it comes down to montages that are uh, full body or not full body and how our character reacts on landing and stuff like that but that would take another few hours I don't want to waste your time uh, you can download this example and you can build on top of it or you can just take parts of it and see how I made it work uh, the most important part of this video is how to set up the combat component how to use the combat buffer and how to do some basic abilities based on that and how to set up the animation montages that we uh, need for it to work and as you can see almost all the logic is being done here very little was actually done in the blueprint itself just uh, some gates to limit sp uh, spamming of abilities but uh, keeping the attacks and buffering them uh, tracing hits doing stuff like that everything is done here oh and i think i need to do one more thing very important combat master right click add event and you have a few events that you might want to do like this one uh, it spawns uh, when you begin an attack and by begin of attack I mean frame zero of a montage another one and attack this is the last frame of an attack or uh, when an attack is being uh, uh, cancelled so it's being overwritten by something and animation is being cancelled now this is on begin uh, trails so uh, I mean on on begin trying to to do those uh, hit traces and at end of hit traces so here and here those events uh, and this one this is the most important one this is actually telling you uh, whenever something is being hit so it doesn't have a boolean if hit it, it always triggers when it's being hit so when you hit something uh, this happens 
and you can do whatever you want. You can uh, take um, hit actor and you can apply point damage for example and this will trigger only on the server uh, and you don't have to worry, worry about this triggering on the client and you know, base damage one and hit from the le direction is this hit info is oh okay hmm. combine and here break mm. uh, event instigator is self damage causer the instigator is the get controller our controller and damage type is just damage type and uh, and the damage actor is the hit actor so yeah you can you can do it like this <clears throat> okay so let's quickly jump back at it and see the effect of today's work so you have the countess you already had her animated, but now she's doing left click with a hold that she's doing attacks. Oh, you know what? see what we have done today so we already had countess animating she's doing an IKM offset and now she's doing left click that we can hold attacks that are blending those are montages Okay, and on right click, she's doing an ability on cooldown of 8 seconds, and now we can't use this ability. On Q, she prepares an ability, and on left mouse click, she's cancelling. Prepare, cancel, prepare, cancel, prepare, cancel, prepare, execute, and she's executing. And now it is on cooldown, I can't hit Q, but I can hit right click because the cooldown ended and we can actually hit objects at least on single player that needs a bit of fixing on multiplayer but all the animations uh, are replicated let's make a quick look at that so let's just play uh, to as client mm -hmm. Okay, so now we got two windows and this is on dedicated server, animations are replicating, states are replicating, turn are replicating, aim offset is replicating, the attacks with trails are replicating properly, right click ability is replicating with every single bit, the cooldown is working, Q ability shows the pose. And now right click cancels, Q right click, left click executes, and yeah, in general it works. It works pretty well. So this is how we work with the combat component. 
enjoy your download I'm gonna have to make a week break at least from making tutorials because I need to focus on a project that I am doing commercially um, right now and uh, once I will be able to update you on the project that I'm working on uh, you know for a company I will but I have an idea in place so we'll see how that works uh, thank you very much for listening I hope you enjoyed this episode and I didn't make much mistakes uh, I will try to edit it as short as possible I know that you hate those two hour videos and prefer to have a 10 minute one so maybe I will even cut it into pieces and put it as episodes thanks for listening and see you guys soon <laughs>